February 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Release my people, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to release them and continue holding them, then the hand of the Lord will surely bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. But the Lord will distinguish between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, and nothing will die of all that the Israelites have. The Lord set an appointed time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. And the Lord did this on the next day. All the livestock of the Egyptians died. But of the Israelites' livestock, not one died. Pharaoh sent representatives to investigate, and indeed, not even one of the livestock of Israel had died. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he did not release the people. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace, and have Moses throw it into the air while Pharaoh is watching. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and will cause boils to break out and fester on both people and animals in all the land of Egypt. So they took soup from a furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses threw it into the air, and it caused festering boils to break out on both people and animals. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for boils were on the magicians and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, stand before Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Release my people so that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues on your very self, and on your servants, and your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with plague, and you would have been destroyed from the earth. But for this purpose, I have caused you to stand to show you my strength, and so that my name may be declared in all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people by not releasing them. I am going to cause very severe hail to rain down about this time tomorrow. Such hail as have never occurred in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. So now, send instructions to gather your livestock and all your possessions in the field to a safe place. Every person or animal caught in the field and not brought into the house, the hail will come down on them and they will die. Those of Pharaoh's servants who feared the word of the Lord hurried to bring in their servants and livestock into the houses. But those who did not take the word of the Lord seriously left their servants and their cattle in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Extend your hand toward the sky that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on people and on animals and on everything that grows in the field in the land of Egypt. When Moses extended his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire fell to the earth. So the Lord caused hail to rain down on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and fire mingled with the hail. The hail was so severe that there had not been any like it in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. The hail struck everything in the open fields, both people and animals, throughout all the land of Egypt. The hail struck everything that grows in the field, and it broke all the trees of the field to pieces. Only in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites lived, was there no hail. So Pharaoh sent and summoned Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous and I and my people are guilty. Pray to the Lord, for the mighty thunderings and hail are too much. I will release you and you will stay no longer. Moses said to him, when I leave the city, I will spread my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease and there'll be no more hail so that you may know that the earth belongs to the Lord. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were struck by the hail. 
for the barley had ripened, and the flax was in bud, but the wheat and the spelt were not struck, for they are later crops. So Moses left Pharaoh, went out of the city, and spread out his hands to the Lord, and the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain stopped pouring on the earth. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder ceased, he sinned again. Both he and his servants hardened their hearts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he did not release the Israelites as the Lord had predicted through Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, in order to display these signs of mine before him, and in order that in the hearing of your son and your grandson, you may tell how I made fools of the Egyptians, and about my signs that I displayed among them, so that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh and told him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, How long do you refuse to humble yourself before me? Release my people so that they may serve me. But if you refuse to release my people, I am going to bring locusts into your territory tomorrow. They will cover the surface of the earth so that you will be unable to see the ground. They will eat the remainder of what escaped, what is left over for you, from the hail, and they will eat every tree that grows for you from the field. They will fill your houses, the houses of your servants, and all the houses of Egypt, such as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen since they had been in the land until this day. Then Moses turned and went out from Pharaoh. Pharaoh's servant said to him, How long will this man be a menace to us? Release the people so that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not know that Egypt is destroyed? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God, exactly who is going with you. Moses said, We will be going with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, and with our sheep and our cattle we will go because we are to hold a pilgrim feast for the Lord. He said to them, The Lord will need to be with you. If I release you and your dependents, watch out. Trouble is right in front of you. No, go, you men only, and serve the Lord, for that is what you want. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. The Lord said to Moses, Extend your hand over the land of Egypt for the locust." that they may come up over the land of Egypt and eat everything that grows in the ground, everything that the hail has left. So Moses extended his staff over the land of Egypt, and then the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all night. The morning came, and the east wind had brought up the locust. The locust went up over all the land of Egypt and settled down in all the territory of Egypt. It was very severe. There had been no locusts like them before, nor will there be such ever again. They covered the surface of all the ground, so that the ground became dark with them, and they ate all the vegetation of the ground and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. Nothing green remained on the trees or on anything that grew in the fields throughout the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. So now forgive my sin this time only, and pray to the Lord your God that he would only take this death away from me. Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord turned a very strong west wind, and it picked up the locusts and blew them into the Red Sea. Not one locust remained in all the territory of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not release the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, Extend your hand toward heaven, so that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness so thick it can be felt. So Moses extended his hand toward heaven, and there was absolute darkness throughout the land of Egypt for three days. No one could see another person, and no one could rise from his place for three days. But the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord. Only your flocks and herds will be detained. Even your families may go with you. But Moses said, 
Will you also provide us with sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may present them to the Lord our God? Our livestock must also go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind, for we must take these animals to serve the Lord our God. Until we arrive there, we do not know what we must use to serve the Lord. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to release them. Pharaoh said to him, Go from me, watch out for yourself. Do not appear before me again, for when you see my face, you will die. Moses said, As you wish, I will not see your face again. God, I wonder if we will ever get this supremacy thing, this sovereign God in control of everything reigns supreme over the entire world and universe. I don't know, sometimes, I would say sometimes I feel like Pharaoh, where I just don't seem to get it, and you, you always end up having to hit me over the head with a two by four to get me to pay attention. And I always tell my friends, you know, at the point where God's screaming at you, it's way past the point where you should have been obedient to what he was asking you to do. Um, you've probably missed a few blessings along the way and definitely have missed opportunities to help God and to serve him. But sometimes I feel like living in the world we live in right now, and I'm not using this as an excuse, it's just truly how I feel right now. We have such an influx of so much of the world things through the internet, uh, social media, uh, through our phone, through TV, through billboards, through what teachers teach in school, through uh, through sometimes even what we hear in church if, if we're not careful about who we're listening to. And I think living in the world hardens our heart to a relationship that we could have with you. And I know, at least with my life, you've sent in the locusts and the gnats and the jumping frogs all over the place to get me to pay attention. God, today, can we just work on softening my worldly heart? That all the influx of information coming into my brain and into my heart, into my thought process would be about you and would be pleasing. And I would gain more knowledge about the relationship that I could have with you and how that would grow and how that would look. I was talking to a client the other day and she surrounded herself on social media and even in friend situations with a lot of negative people. And she's kind of baffled why she's always negative and that's the same situation here, that if we surround ourselves with worldly things, we're going to end up with a worldly heart, a hardened heart, just like Pharaoh. So before you have to send in the next plague into our life, God, to get our attention or the next two by four, please help us work today on softening our hearts and our hearing abilities to hear you the first time when you ask us to be obedient and do something for you. Allow us to work on the influx of what comes into our lives, what we allow to be around us. God, I just want my heart to be filled with you. I want my heart and my thoughts and my words to be pure and loving and kind. Filled with mercy and grace and forgiveness when it's needed. And yet I seem to catch myself all through the day, God, just with words from the world. So today I ask you to take your place on the throne of my heart, God. And I ask for your strength today. And you and I together can make sure that I don't live in the world. I want to be not of this world, God. And I want to have a heart for you. 
not a hardened heart like Pharaoh did. Thank you for the blessings that are coming. And thank you for all the incredible blessings you've given me so far. In your son's name we pray. Amen.